Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya. I know you are all hearing a lot about coronavirus and COVID-19, and there is so much information out there. I hope you're really relying on credible sources such as the CDC, the WHO, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and my channel. But I had my team scour the internet to find all the misinformation, and today I'm going to bust the 10 most common myths that we found out there because I want to bring you accurate in and up-to-date information. So today is March 18th because things are changing rapidly. So if anything changes over the next few days, I will come back and let you know. Okay, myth number one. Coronavirus only affects older people. So this is false. This is a myth because coronavirus affects all ages of people. Now the good news is that kids really have mild symptoms, but the problem is that they can still pass the disease around even when they're not coughing and they don't have a runny nose. There's something called asymptomatic transmission. Also, people can be contagious two days before they actually develop the typical symptoms, which might be fever and a cough. So the the right thing, though, is that older people are more seriously affected. So this is why we want kids to stay away from grandparents. We want everyone to wash their hands and practice social distancing. And if you have any older people at your home, please try to protect them. And if they do have any symptoms, especially shortness of breath, tight, um, tight chest, or they're really not looking well, please call your doctor right away as they can get very sick very quickly. Okay, myth number two. If you hold your breath for 10 seconds without coughing, you don't have COVID-19. Okay, I don't know who started this myth, but this is absolutely false. Um, you can hold your breath. Holding your breath and relaxing could actually be good, but it doesn't mean you're not sick with any illness. Sometimes you can even suppress a cough when you're sick. Have you ever had a cough and you're talking to somebody and you're like, I don't want to cough in front of them? Anyway, so this is not true at all. Um, if you have COVID-19, you may or may not be able to hold your breath but um, definitely this is a myth. Myth number three, if you're not coughing or sneezing, you can't transmit the virus. So the main mode of transmission is through droplets, which is coughing or sneezing or breathing near someone when you have the virus, the corona, the new coronavirus. However, you can still transmit the infection even if you're not having symptoms or before you get symptoms. So this is another myth. This is why social distancing is so important. You should stay at least six, week, six feet away from people and be very careful in your home to disinfect surfaces, um, not get too close to other people, not share food, and really be cautious, especially if anybody in your family is a high-risk member, like they have a heart disease or lung disease or any other immunosuppression or underlying illness, which makes them more at risk for serious infection from the coronavirus. Myth number four, hot weather or liquid kills the novel coronavirus. I hear this a lot. So there are many viruses who don't like hot weather, right? That's why we have more illnesses during the winter and during the summer months, a lot of viruses tend to dwindle out and go away. However, this is a new virus, so we have no idea what's gonna happen with the novel coronavirus when the summer hits. We hope it might go away, but right now we are on such a rapid increase of cases here in the United States that unless we really do social distancing and stay home and avoid sharing our germs, it is gonna continue to increase despite the weather. There's also no evidence that drinking hot liquids compared to cold liquids um, changes the virus, but I like to drink hot water all day long. It helps my voice since I tend to talk a lot, so drink whatever water you prefer as hydration is very important. Myth number five, coronavirus can be transmitted by mosquitoes. There is no evidence that mosquitoes can transmit coronavirus. They can transmit other illnesses such as West Nile virus or malaria. Um, so definitely if you're in an area with a lot of mosquitoes for other reasons, there's a good, idea, the good reason to use um, mosquito repellent. Um, and as the weather warms up, we will be seeing more mosquitoes, but right now we have no reason to believe that mosquitoes can transmit the coronavirus. Myth number six, hand dryers are effective in killing novel coronavirus. So this goes a little bit back to the heat one we talked about. 
Um, it's not the hand dryers. It's actually the washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. The coronavirus is um, surrounded by this um, bilayer lipid sticky thick membrane. And really the best thing is to scrub it off with soap for 20 seconds and that will help just swish it off your hands. Um, and then however you dry your hands, whether it's a hand dryer or a paper towel or a towel, um, it should be effective because it's actually the hand washing for 20 seconds that works. And if possible, if anyone else in your house is sick, use paper towels and throw them out instead of sharing the same towel. Myth number seven, taking temperatures before kids play together or attend school can detect the coronavirus. So this is something school districts are talking about as a screening method. But taking the temperature with a temporal artery scanner or a thermal scanner, all that does is tell you a child's body temperature. And if it's elevated, it may be a sign that they're sick, but they could be sick with anything. There's so many other viruses going around right now. In addition, many kids we know that get the new coronavirus don't even get the fever or temperature. So this is not really an adequate way to screen them. The other thing is that if kids are wearing hoodies, turtlenecks, or they're in car seats, they can have a falsely elevated temperature with some of the temporal artery scanners. So that's something we always take a look at when kids come into our office and we try to have them undress and wait a few minutes before checking their temperature. And the other concern is that parents could maybe pre-medicate their kids with a fever reducer and then send them to school anyway. And that's something we really don't want to do because if you think your kids are sick at all, they should really be home, especially right now. Myth number eight. You shouldn't take ibuprofen if you have COVID-19. This is a really hot topic right now. Um, this came out of France um, where apparently there was a child who was very sick and they were concerned that maybe the ibuprofen lowered the immune system a little bit and um, allowed the COVID-19 to worsen. Um, the WHO also um, put out a statement on this concern. However, I have reviewed the data and I do not think there is enough evidence to show that ibuprofen is dangerous if you have coronavirus. That said, there are other fever reducers you can use such as acetaminophen or Tylenol. Um, always talk to your own doctor um, about any questions or concerns, especially when it comes to giving your kids medication at any time. Myth number nine. Getting a flu or pneumonia vaccine protects against COVID-19. So flu vaccines are important to help decrease your chance of catching the flu and decrease your chance of serious consequences and secondary infections from having the flu. The pneumonia vaccines can also protect against different types of pneumonia, whether it's H influenza or the pneumococcal vaccine, depending on which vaccine you get, which usually depends on your age group and if your doctor feels it's necessary. So these vaccines will not protect against coronavirus. However, if you get coronavirus, we do know that some people will get a secondary infection, which can be a bacterial pneumonia. So having pneumonia vaccines can decrease the chance of getting a secondary pneumonia. So that's why vaccines are important. And they are currently working on a vaccine for coronavirus. And I hope that next year something will be available um, for us to protect so many people that are vulnerable in our um, country. Myth 10, everyone should stay home. So everyone should avoid contact with other individuals. So this is called social distancing. And the reason is that when you're close to somebody, that's how the disease spreads, whether or not you're even symptomatic. Um, the time is six feet, the distance that you should be away from others in your community, which means you shouldn't be going to the grocery store, you shouldn't be having play dates, you should not be going to the mall. But it doesn't mean you have to stay cooped up inside your house, especially if you have kids. Fresh air is important every day. So I'm encouraging all my families to get outside, hopefully in your own yard. So if you have the space, your backyard is great. Run around and play with your kids. Go for a walk in your neighborhood, but avoid other families. You can just wave and say hi, you know, and cross the street looking both ways to avoid contact with them. But fresh air for everybody every day is really important. So those are the top 10 myths that we found online that hopefully this information was helpful for you today um, because I always love debunking myths. I like accurate and up-to-date information. So if you liked what you saw today, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more information. I'll see you guys all soon. Bye.